everybody. Coming to you from a Bass Pro Shops here in Springfield, Missouri. But not just any Bass Pro Shops, because I know they're all over the country. This is the very first founded here in Springfield, Missouri. The very first one, and they are all very unique. This one's got a lot of construction still going on, even though it was built in the 70s. Look at this ginormous big screen TV right here. Just park your RV out here in the parking lot and watch the football game, yeah. Maybe a little known fact about Bass Pro, but I have overnight camped at several of them and Cabela's around the country. Never had a problem, so you might be okay. Overnight parking, boondocking in their parking lot for one night as well. But as I understand it, all of these little shops, not little, these are huge, but they try to incorporate a little bit of each individual area that they build these in. Uncle Buck, John Wiley. I mean, look at this place. Jeez. I'm not sure exactly what kind of construction and remodeling they've got planned, but they're doing a lot of work currently in this location. Oh my Whoa. gosh, they've got alligators here. Jeez. Live alligators, great. Won't be seeing too many of those. I'm going north, at least for the summer. Anyway, I could spend hours and hours in here, but I'm not going to. I'm going to get back on the road. But there you go, the first ever. And right across the street at this muffler shop is something fun. Muffler Pegas, they call this. The muffler car. I mean, with headlights and everything. That's different. I wonder if it's actually drivable. It sure is. It's an automatic. I can see the... Wow. Funky. Is it licensed? Um, I don't know. Well, there's that for you. Let's go up into uh, North Springfield and see a couple more things. Welcome to downtown Springfield, Missouri, everybody. Kind of a small town, actually. Not too bad for traffic on an early morning. Trail of Tears Crossing. I don't know, that sounds depressing though. Looks kind of like Humpty Dumpty or... I don't... I don't know. There's some plaques here talking about the sculptor and stuff, but... <laughs> very interesting. We're gonna cross the road here and go to the center of the city. This Park Central Square, and they're doing some kind of event here today. Look at this little plaque and symbol on the road. It says, here Dave Tut fell after being shot by James Butler Wild Bill Hickok, July 1st, 1865. In this very spot here in the square. Well, that's interesting. Let's go to the other side and see if we can see where Wild Bill was standing. All right, I found it here. You can see the diagram with the corner. It says, here James Butler Wild Bill Hickok stood when he shot Dave Tut over a gambling debt. <laughs> wow, 1865, that is really a long time ago, wow. I mean, back in those days, guns weren't as accurate, but he shot him dead on one shot from 75 yards all the way across here like that. That's pretty impressive. Okay, we're getting out of Springfield now. We're gonna head east on Route 66. Look at all these advertisements here. Free chocolate, snacks and drinks, clean restrooms. The Candy Factory, and advertised as the world's largest gift store. Nah. We'll see. I'm kind of surprised they don't offer any RV parking here. <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna go way over here. Actually, I'm just gonna park right here. That's strange though. Hey, the sun's poking through, getting about 10 amps of solar. It's still kind of overcast, but it's going to burn through. It's going to be 96 degrees today. The world's largest gift store. Okay. I'm just going to say for the record, usually when they spend that much time and effort to advertise to get you off the highway, usually it's pretty dumb. I'm sorry. So hold out high hopes, but we'll see. Actually, I really do like that hat. That's more my style. It's not, it doesn't have the big trucker lip like that. So sometimes along my travels, I find um, magnets that are in the shape of states and always wondered about it. Here's something interesting, you guys. It's a 50-state U.S. map, and you collect the individual states 
that all together will basically build the United States. So this is something you could put on your fridge, although it won't work on most RV refrigerators. But you could collect the individual states as you go, and then basically you're collecting magnets and stickers in a sense to see where you've been. So just something different they have here. Uh, I will at least say this is definitely the biggest gift store. <gasps> oh, check it out. Here's a blast from the past. Here's I Love Lucy's 1940 Cadillac. Well, I guess I'm really showing my age if I say I remember this. Well, the eating the chocolate on the conveyor belt, that, that's the scene that I remember most. That's the one that rings a bell. Very nice. Well, I guess it's worth a stop. Get a new hat, so definitely worth it. Let's get back on the road and head east. This uh, rhythm I've developed for travel along Route 66 has been working out really well for me as far as waking up, doing most of my traveling in the morning, and then basically, and all my filming and everything, and then basically getting parked before 2 or 3 p.m. so that I can edit video throughout the afternoon and the night and basically just be in one spot to be able to be parked. It's been working really well for me. Look at that hat. That's awesome. I'm going to miss my Motley Crue hat, but I'll wear it later. Give it the old Eric bend on the bell. And, oh yeah, got a tip that there is a Waffle House six miles away because my last Waffle House experience was not pleasant in Texas. And I don't think there's going to be a whole lot more as I travel north. I'm sure probably not going to see one in the summer up north. So I'm going to go get breakfast. Let's do the two egg breakfast, scrambled bacon, hash browns, and sausage gravy on top of that. Perfect. Okay, is there anything else? Maybe wish one more jelly. Alright, no problem. Oh man, that was good. Okay, I have restored faith in, faith in Waffle House, even though it may be a while before I find one. Jax, you cozy over there? Or? <laughs> it's so weird. Like, he'll literally go from here to here to the dashboard to underneath my seat. So funny! So funny! Let's go east, buddy. Check it out, everybody. Welcome to Uranus. Oh my gosh, look at the size of Uranus. I'm just gonna park my RV right in Uranus. All right, everybody, I ain't gonna lie. This looks like a pretty cool place off Route 66. So let's go sniff around Uranus. Wait, what's this? Free water for Nomadic Fanatic? <whistles> eh, eh. How did they even fit that thing in Uranus? Look, you can put your face through the animal's butt. <laughs> well, obviously, you do have to patrol Uranus. It's a cool double-decker bus. Be a really cool RV restoration. When there's a fire, you gotta put the fire out in Uranus. You can even get a tattoo in Uranus. Oh, you can play with your balls in Uranus? Oh, man. I don't know about that one. <laughs> nice, they have a general store here in Uranus. Hi, Hi. Uranus burger, six dollars. Oh, they sell a bald man's comb. I do need that. Hi, welcome to Uranus. <laughs> I'll bet that gets old green, everybody. Welcome to Uranus. When they leave, they say, thanks for picking Uranus. <laughs> Jeez, how much candy can they fit in Uranus? Chocolate covered nuts right in your anus. Oh. Can I ask you, do you have magnets for your anus? We do. do the half pound of fudge with no. regular chocolate and peanut butter. Hi guys, welcome to your anus. Does that ever get old throughout the day? No, no? We say it. I know. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to your anus. Did you find everything okay? Yeah, it's a fun little stopover. Your first time here? Yeah. How'd you find the place? Uh, signs right before. Yeah, I said it and I probably giggled to myself and I saw. Do you ever get too many people in your anus? So we laugh for 10 minutes straight. Yep. Thank you. Thanks for picking your anus. <laughs> oh, I love that you can eat fudge from your anus. Oh my gosh. Mmm. Mmm. It's gonna melt in here though. I better put it in the fridge. Mmm. I definitely got everything you can get out of your anus. I'd, I'd come back to your anus. 
So Jax and I uh, re-watched the Disney Pixar's Cars last night, and it was really, really rewarding because after seeing so much of Route 66 in person, I made so many more connections to the movie. Like, oh, okay, well they took this and turned it into this. Or they're, they're par like, there's a lot of parodies. There was a lot of stuff where I could be like, I could really appreciate what they were trying to do to make adults like look at the movie and say, wow, that's... Rocking chair, Guinness record book. Well, guess what, everybody? This is not even the biggest rocker in the country. There's actually a little sign up here that says world's largest rocker Guinness record book from 2008 to 2016. So I believe it was built in 2008, but I did some research and actually Illinois, just like Illinois uh, made that cross that was eight feet taller than the one in Texas, Illinois made a rocker that was like four or five feet taller. So I think the state of Illinois has like some kind of complex where they just have to outdo everything that's huge. But that is really funny. You can literally park an RV underneath this thing. That's how tall it is. But not even the biggest in the country anymore. How sad is that? In case you haven't realized, my videos are delayed, guys. <laughs> anyway, today happens to be a Saturday. So there's been a lot of stuff going on. And here we are at Danny's gas hole. But this, this is original Route 66, not most of I-44 that I've been on. And except for the occasional car going by, it's deserted. Nobody's here. This place is completely bypassed. Oh, wait a minute, it's closed. That's weird, it has a no trespassing sign. I really thought this place was open. Oh, that's too bad. Somebody put a lot of time and effort into restoring this quirky little spot and then just, I don't know, gave up, I guess. There you go, it's for sale. The Fanning Outpost in Cuba, Missouri. So, there's the number to call, guys, if you're interested. I'll go halves or 20ths with you guys and we'll just build a little uh, RV park in the back with full hookups. Right, right there, that's where we'll put the full hookups, guys. And we'll bring this place back to life, woo! Well, everybody, we're going to uh, get off of Route 66 now and hit up I-44 East. It just runs parallel. Time out. Um, I am not on Route 66 right now. I'm on an access road to get back to the highway. Whoa! Let me just say, this is amazing. I don't see a single vehicle or anything. Whoa, okay. This is my last stop of the day, actually. Unfortunately, whatever this is, it is clearly also abandoned, well, not abandoned, but definitely closed, not open right now. This may be one of the best ones I found, too. Wow. Wait a minute, I hear something. No, it's not open. It's clearly not open, but it's called Bob's Gasoline Alley. And he loves to collect gas pumps and porcelain signs. Wow. Love the clock and the street light. I think what happens is this is kind of like the show part. I don't know why it's not open in the middle of the summer on a Saturday, but that's probably his house, it's probably where he lives. So, um, sadly, I think maybe this place just, it's not on Route 66, like I said. This is the, Route 66 is over there, and that's Highway 44 right there. So it's an access road to get to Route 66, so maybe, but, hmm. He's got a ton of these old gas signs. Zephyr Gasoline, MFA, White Rose Golf, the old Model T with, wow, like a zombie driving. Okay. Pretty fun little stopover, but not a whole lot happening. So, 
and go get checked into my campground. So if you're a YouTuber and uh, you film and edit and travel for a living all the time, how do you get a day off? How do, do, you, do you ever get to take a day off? Yeah, you uh, double up the miles, double up the attractions, then get to a place like this and book two days, two nights, and then just enjoy it. This tent spot has an air conditioner in their tent. Winning! That is actually pretty cool. Good idea. Really good idea. They got a bunch of stuff over there and they've got like three different pools. And I'm just at the point right now where I'm, I'm just kind of exhausted. I'm not, the pool doesn't interest me at all. So just gonna hang out. I'll see you guys in a couple days as we head east. Hey guys, so it's, it's 8 p.m. here and I'm just getting through editing. The video and I saw the last clip I made outside and I was like wow I look really sad and depressed and that was a terrible closing I would have to redo that but then again I thought maybe I, maybe I did like really explain it well enough I really am just a combination of tired and exhausted every single day I have been packing so much into and doing so much and traveling so much it's like I kind of miss those days back home in the Northwest where I would just camp for three or four days in the same spot. And there's no reason why I can't, except the heat factor. You have to understand, I'm born and raised in the Northwest. Our summers in July average 76 degrees. August is 77 degrees. Very mild, mild summers. And these, I just don't do well with the heat. I really don't. I never have. That's why I try to chase 70 degrees, and that's why I'm really looking forward to a summer in the upper Michigan Peninsula, where it's very similar climate to back home. Um, last year, when I started my, my quest in the summertime to try to get east, at the time, I thought it was a great idea. Hug the north border all the way from Washington State to Maine, and it'll be fine, and it really wasn't. There, were, there was a couple weeks there in Montana and going through North Dakota where it for a week straight, it was over 100 degrees. And I remember thinking, where did this come from? Why is this happening? I can't get any farther north in this country unless I go into Canada. Like this is as far north as you can get and it's this hot. It, it just baffled me, but it wasn't high elevation and it wasn't close to the water. So I, I learned on that trip. Um, what did I learn this trip? Don't get stuck in the Midwest when summer ends. Um, by June 20th, Eric, you should be well north by June 20th, especially if you're in the middle of the country right now. So this was a mistake to, for me to be here this late. I didn't think it was going to be a mistake. So what you can expect from me in the next two weeks to come as I finish up Route 66 is more than likely I'm going to be traveling about 100 miles a day to finish. And as it turns out, it looks like I am actually going to be really close to getting from Los Angeles, California to Chicago, Illinois in exactly 66 days, if my calculations are right, which is pretty cool, because then I can make a playlist that says Route 66 in 66 days. Uh, but it, you know, it wasn't planned. And then as for that, I still haven't decided if I want to go up into Michigan to get up into Michigan, or do I want to go into Wisconsin maybe and try some new stuff. So. Uh, anyway, just thought I would close out this video a little more formally and apologize. I literally am just tired and I really need two days to just mellow out. But my videos are far enough ahead that you are not even going to see a difference. So in two days you're going to see a video from me going east from here with a smile on my face, but totally relaxed and rested and okay with life. Right now, I'm not feeling my best. so. Anyways, guys, have a great night. Jackson, I'll see you in a couple days. Bye-bye. Hey guys, this is Jax, my kitty cat. I'm his servant, Eric. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel here on RVing. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up below. Make sure you subscribe, check out all our other videos, and keep following us on the road. Thanks, guys.